Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're making this video for people who, like us, uh, have changed from a DSLR camera to a CCD or CMOS. Yes, it's a whole new world. Uh, when you're used to a DSLR camera and you have to switch to a CMOS slash CCD camera, you're really not sure what to do. You don't know how to use the filters, you don't know how to use um, you know, the camera itself. And we made many mistakes along the way recently with our new camera. So we want to make this video to help you guys and make you waste like, less time. Be more efficient with your time, and, <laughs> I um, guess. Yeah, not do the same mistakes we did. So let's get to it. So the first of the five things that we wish we knew before getting a CCD or CMOS camera um, is the gain and binning settings, which weren't available before on the DSLR camera. So our first time imaging Thor's helmet, we had no idea what to use for the binning and for the gain. Uh, thankfully we had service there and we looked it up and we just did binning one times one, which is the default option. And we did a medium gain, I think, which is 139. So the gain is kind of like ISO on a DSLR, but not really. Um, but it's kind of like ISO. So for now, we're still learning this, but we learned so far that a gain of you know, 139, which is medium, is great for uh, narrowband imaging, whereas a gain of low gain, which is between 0 and 75, is great for you know, um, galaxies or LRGB stuff. So mostly galaxies and clusters. And, but we're still, we're still learning about this. We're not sure uh, what settings to use exactly. Like for example, we don't know if a high gain is good or not for what target. So we'll, we'll see it in the future, but for now, uh, we're doing the low are, and medium. Yeah, the settings are going to probably remain the same for us. And the, the binning, we're just going to keep it default for now. Um, but yeah, that's a, a pretty tricky one if you're not used to it. So the second thing that we wish we knew before we got a CCD or CMOS was um, the like filters. So we got a filter wheel with our CC or our CMOS camera, and there are seven filters. There's L R G B, uh, the hydrogen alpha filter, sulfur, and oxygen. And you know, with the DSLR camera, you don't have those. It would just you just take the image as it is. So you just point and shoot, and then you got the image. And you know now it's a little different, so we've got to like you know strategically choose which filters to use on particular targets. So we only used filters once, which was on the DSLR camera uh, for balance loop, but it's kind of different here. Here we have to choose uh, filters on the DSLR camera. It's just an extra thing. We learned that for galaxies and clusters in general, okay, in general, um, as of now we use LRGB. Um, it's like a regular you know, RGB palette and then luminance as well for details because luminance is really for details so we do those uh, thanks to you guys actually because in the comments you told us to use uh, luminance more than RGB uh, so we now use I think about twice as much luminance as um, RGB um, so for galaxies and clusters now for nebulae we learned that we mostly do narrowband imaging which is HA03 and S2, but not for all of them. For example, M106 has a lot of HA in it, uh, so we used the HA filter on top of LRGB. You can see the, the result between M106 LRGB and M106 LRGB plus HA on our website, on the M106 page, and you can see a big difference. It's much more red, it's, you can see much more uh, details in it, thanks to the HA filter. thing would be that the CCD or CMOS is going to need its own power source. For whatever reason, we thought that we could plug it into the PC and that would be the power source. However, what we discovered is that it is... Impossible, no. <laughs> so, um, if you are getting a CCD or a CMOS camera like this one here, the ASI 1600, you need to plug it in to its own power source as well. So you will have to use your PC or you know, ASI Air for acquisition, but you will need to plug in 
um, the power here on this little hole here for the fan to be able to turn on. You know, so the whole point of this is to have a fan turning on, so right. it's, it's cooled down. So yes, you will need to plug it in right here. Um, this is for the PC, and so yeah, you need your own power supply, which is why we bought the Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Box, so we can you know um, send power to all our cameras and stuff at the same time. And um, yeah, so you need your own power for the camera. So the fourth thing, speaking about the fan, is you need to make sure that your CCD or CMOS uh, is able to cool down properly before actual use. Like, that's kind of, again, the whole reason it has a fan inside and needs a power source because it really needs to cool down before you use it. It takes a while between the moment you activate the cool down and, um, you know, it reaches the actual temperature you want it to be. So if you want it to be at minus 20 degrees, it takes, you know, a few minutes before it's actually there. For example, here in Nevada, it's really hot sometimes and, you know, now in summer, it takes a really long time for the camera to cool down. And actually now it can't even cool down all the way to minus 20. It's like maybe around minus 10, minus 14 maximum. Right. So you have to find, you have to find the, the lowest possible temperature, wait for it, and then start imaging. Yeah. Like it's good for it to for you to wait until it has a stable temperature and, and again you're gonna see like such a difference too if you're taking the, the pictures. Waiting for it to cool down other than just plugging it in and starting it right then and there. And if you don't wait for it, you're gonna have different uh, temperature for each image. And once you stack everything together, if you include darks, uh, the darks won't work it's as well. It's not gonna work. So this fifth piece of advice uh, actually came from someone in our comments. I think either on uh, YouTube or YouTube. Facebook. A few of them, um, Yeah, so thanks for letting us know. Uh, what we've been doing before was we had the camera and then we attached something in the middle, the adapter. adapter, and then we would put the filter wheel and that was kind of a no-no. Uh, someone suggested to us that we should keep it as close as possible to avoid vignetting. Yeah, you, want to, you really want the, the camera to be as close as possible to the filter wheel. So, you know, the, the, the camera is here, the sensor is here, and the filter is right here. It has to really touch almost. The farther it is away from there is why that vignetting, vignetting occurs. So uh, that was a really useful piece of information that we didn't know, but we were very excited for someone to, you know, reach out and tell us. Again, we're not like, you know, professionals, so. Uh, you know, we appreciate any piece of advice that you guys give us because, I mean, it's useful for us. And thanks to you, now we can tell it to a few thousand people more, so... Yay! <laughs> do it! Okay, that was it. Those are five uh, things we wish we knew before, you know, starting imaging with a CCD slash CMOS camera. So we hope this will be helpful to you if you plan to make a switch between a DSLR camera and a cooled camera. And you should do it, you know, if you have the time and the money and you want to, you know, really step up your game in this hobby then do it and you know a lot of it is really just a learning curve so i mean if we can just cut off that time for people who also want to invest in ccd or cmos like it's totally worth it like obviously it's not fun for us to spend time on it but if we can help anybody else that makes us happy at least and you know we can see everybody else doing their little astrophotography thing so we'll see you next time and um yep yes guys <laughs>